I'll call the meeting to order and ask for a motion on the agenda. I move to accept the agenda. I'll second. I should have said first, I do want to make one change and report on the Planning Commission oh, hearing on the sorry. new uh, uh, design review regs. We can do that at the end just before adjournment. Do it at the end, yeah. Yeah. So with that amendment still good? Yes. Yes. Uh, let's we'll go around and introduce yourselves. Martha, Sm Martha Smirsky. Liz Pritchett. Meredith Crandall, staff. Eric Gilbertson, chair for the evening. Benjamin Cheney. Hannah Smith. Okay, 159 State Street. Just a reminder to pull the microphone close and talk into it. Yana Wilder, I'm here for Court Street Associates. You can just describe. Oh, okay. Uh, so we're, we're applying to uh, take down a structure in the back. It's a, an auxiliary structure that's that garden shed, I think, used to be a garden shed, and it's um, falling down, so we're hoping to take it down. I stopped in there and got up the other day. Oh, nice. Is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there was a lot of snow. I couldn't really get it, but I could see that it was in really bad shape. I mean, the photographs show that. Yeah, I, I went and looked at it. Done. <laughs> <laughs> it was a neat little garden house, so it really was a garden house, not not a guest house. But it's really nice. It has windows and nice shelves and a nice place to put your equipment. Oh, I didn't go to be close. You yeah. really got in there. Yeah. Yeah. I spent a lot of time in it. It was a beautiful little building. Oh. It makes me quite sad to see it oh. in its current condition. Were you but, like part of like making snowboards in there or something? <sighs> Yeah. Okay. Well, there's a poster in there I'm going to save for you. Yes, I, I know the poster you're talking okay. about. I don't need it. But <laughs> okay. <good. laughs> but thank you. <laughs> yes. Andrew, that was Andrew Clack's younger brother, Paul. Nice. Do you know what the uh, is going to happen with those materials when it gets? Um, I, I think that most materials are done because it's kind of in the shade of the trees and it's wet and I don't think any of the materials are salvageable. When do you think it's going to be? At some point in the spring. It's going to wait till spring. Yeah. Because I think, yeah. so. Cause I think a lot of that tongue and groove fur that's on the inside is probably salvageable parts of it. I oh, mean, I, yeah, we'll take a look. I think it's mold and it's probably not very mm -hmm. usable. Yeah. Oh, this is a little bit different than most of our applications. Yeah. So, is, do we still need to go through the criteria? Uh, um, would you live there? I think it can be pretty much all not, ex not applicable for most of it. I mean, It doesn't really fit with the way we've got this, does no, it? No, it doesn't. I mean, you yeah. I mean, I can, you can probably do a, you know, pretty much not applicable for all, for all the criteria. And yeah, well, I'll okay. read them off real quick, and somebody stop me. Preservation or reconstruction of appropriate historic style. That's uh, not applicable. Harmony of exterior design. Uh, again, not applicable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials, not applicable. Compatibility of the proposed landscaping with the district, not, not applicable. Prevention of use of incompatible designs, not applicable. Location and appearance of all utilities, not applicable. Recognition of uh, and respect for view corridors, not applicable. Uh, 
Um, I'm just going to put a note that several members of the design review committee have looked at the building and it is in terrible condition. I think that's great. And I mean, Jan and I have already talked that when, when and if they're ready to build something else there, they know it has to come back before the design review committee. But you weren't really in the space to figure out what you want to do there yet. <laughs> Trying to figure out what's needed. Yeah, exactly. If you're going to have a garden, you could build another a garden. garden. <laughs> Do you spend much time in, in that building? Yep. It's offices now. It's yeah. offices. I mean, it's been offices for a long time. But I think actually um, something like the use that it was used for, for like fabrication, like building snowboards, or I've had people come and ask me about building canoes, so something that's like a heated space for mm -hmm. that kind of people as a workshop, I think is what's mm -hmm. needed in Montpelier. What would I, I'd like to have that in my backyard. <laughs> 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 Not the way it is, but uh, all in favor of approving the demolition? Opposed? the third today, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is. <coughs> In the upstairs corner office, it faces sort of downstream of beams and the ceiling above like the beams. The, the what? The what's above? The ceiling that is above the beams mm -hmm. in that in that office. I redid that ceiling when the ceiling let go from all those beams, and okay. it was just like a mess across the desks. You used to you used to use that. That was Dick Sodic's office, my, mm -hmm. which was above my father. And uh, they actually, that those guys, there was solar um, guys there, their company, and uh, they all of a sudden had uh, exposed beams in their office. It was really nice after they were done. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep. Thanks. All set? All set? Thank you. Okay. The next one is 100 State Street. Awning proposal. Awning slash sign, really. Yeah. It's the redo, a, a revision to the one you guys saw not that long ago. Okay. Um, yes, Roger okay. Samuel from Samuel Sign Company representing Northfield Savings Bank. Um, if you recall, uh, you guys approved um, a canvas awning for the 100 State Street a couple of months ago. <laughs> when the awning finally went up, Tom Levitt, the president of Northfield Savings Bank, said, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> so they asked us to come up with a, um, what he doesn't like is the fabric, the, the loose, wrinkly looking of the banner material itself. So what we're proposing is to replace the banner material with this rigid substrate material that we have used on the um, College Street branch and then apply to that um, PVC lettering, which this is an example of from one of their projects. Um, so it'd be white lettering and then the logo is this uh, gold. Tom likes to call it gold. It looks yellow to me, but <laughs> I'm just the sign guy. Um, and so combination of that. So all we're looking to do, and the other thing is the landlord didn't like the fact that the banners went across the brick um, columns. So okay. he's asking that we um, put a space between the panels so that the brick is exposed as well. So essentially the same footprint, the same size logo that's on there now, just replacing it with the rigid materials. And we will, <clears throat> we will use the existing uh, frame structure that the banner company installed to apply the panels to.
The smallest radius on your CNC is a quarter inch that gets in there. You have to make that a tighter. Correct. Yeah. Any questions or comments? What is your timeline for doing this? So we would be looking at installing it um, in March, mid middle to end of March. There's a early lead time on material. Um, Tom, they, I think they were going to complete the awning and leave that in place until we can take the, take the banner off and then replace it with the panels. Okay. Are, are you doing the uh, rigid stuff on the hood above the uh, door? Too? We are, yes. Is this a lettering change, the, the mm -hmm. F and the I in field? No, it should be the same as it was. Is the fog different? No, it's the same logo. Oh. Oh, I'm just looking at this one and then this. It's a different fog, that's all. Yeah, so when they yeah. did the rebrand from right. the blue logo, mm -hmm. there was a font change at that point. Yeah. 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 And that's the font change there was something that got approved the last I just included it in this application so that everything was together. Well, little changes keep the sign people in business, right? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and to be honest, I hated that pig logo, but a lot of people in South Vermont love it. So <laughs> the pig logo. The pig logo. Yeah. 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 No. <laughs> And if you, the awning is being interrupted by these columns on this side, why is it not being interrupted there? Um, we could do that. They only ask for it to be done on State Street, the landlord. Because it, I mean, it doesn't read in this photograph, but I bet that column's also interrupted. Correct. Right, just the angle does. Correct. Yeah, so the, the facade panels that are, go over that entranceway dead end to the side of the brick. I don't know. It seems to me... For consistency. For consistency, if you're already doing it, why not expose that that brick column also? We absolutely can, yeah. Well, you don't expose it on the front where it says North Grand, though. Right. He said that would be fine because yeah. the logo was going across there to leave that uh, solid. And so. it's got a, yeah, it's got a rhythm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It doesn't bother me on the side, the way it is, but, but I see what you're saying. Yeah, I would interrupt it if given the choice, mm -hmm. but it's not mine. Yeah, mm, that's a That's a design review thing. That's a, just, I mean, there was, we had the whole debate last time about whether those were architectural features or not. So. Oh, right. And I feel like we're now calling them architectural yeah. features by... Like, yeah. yeah. By, by calling them out. By calling them out. So mm -hmm. we should treat them consistently yeah. is how yeah. I feel about it. I would agree. I think that's a good, good call. So and last time you asked for the larger picture of the entire building, so I think that puts it in context, yeah. better context as well. So we're going to expose the State Street side as well, right? No, I think we leave the parking lot. The parking lot. I see. I see. I see. Well, we'll yeah. leave this one because it, it it gives nice space for their logo and lettering. Let that one be covered. Yeah, I did. I don't pay. I, I think that's a good suggestion. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Signs have a special set of criteria. For, uh, preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style if the proposed project involves an historic district or an historic st structure. I, I, I think that's not applicable for this one. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district. 
I would say that's acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials with other properties in the district, that's acceptable. Compatibility of the proposed landscaping, there's no landscaping. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, that's uh, acceptable. Location of all utilities, you're not doing any lights or anything? No, no lighting. Okay. <coughs> Recognition of and respect for view corridors and significant vistas. Uh, I think that's acceptable. Conformance with cityscape placement and design recommendations. Acceptable. Compatibility with subject property and adjacent properties. It's acceptable. Shall not obscure significant architectural details. That's acceptable with the exposure. Illumination, internally lit plastic signs, not applicable. Pennants and banners are prohibited, not applicable. Individual letters affixed or painted or graved directly on the building or structure are encouraged. That's acceptable. Okay, and, but we're going to expose the. Uh, we're not going to change any of the color exposures, right? Oh, uh, the on the parking on the lot parking side. lot side expose. What, one more brick column on the parking lot side? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Parking lot side be probably... I guess when it's... Six. Uh, what would that be, the... Southerly, center southerly center most banner? Most center we have column of the right... A column, yes. Yeah, column. Yeah, west side. Column in the middle of awning A. Awning A. Awning A. Yep. Yeah. I kind of prefer it the way it is, but <laughs> <laughs> seems cleaner to me. But. Oh, God, it was kind of the original intent, and then when it came back, it was like, oh, I missed that the first time. <laughs> and that was the landlord versus the right president. Okay. A couple of different tweaks. Yeah. <laughs> Got a lot of hands in the pot. <laughs> All in favor of this? <laughs> well, I'll vote for it, but Thank you so much. We'll Thank you for your time. New yeah, permit you. out to you yeah. soon. Okay. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So we can right, do so minutes some... first if you want, or yeah, we've got the minutes yeah. on here. And we actually have enough people. You and Hannah and Martha. You have enough? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're just going to do minute review first, but you can take a seat. Okay. Uh, should I hear a motion on approving the January 21st minutes? So moved. I second it. All in favor? I'm assuming you put your hand up. 
Awesome. Okay. Hi. Hi. Thanks for your time, everybody. My name is Javier Jimenez, and I'm one of the owners of Bookspieler Records on Langdon Street. And, uh, just yes. Like Test. <laughs> um, can we leave everything? Oh, okay, great. Um, thank you every again for everybody's time, and thank you, Meredith, for setting this up. Um, and I'm essentially, I, the reason I'm here today is um, my partner and I are looking for some guidance on our support structure that is um, holding our sign. And it's a very old sign that is currently there, um, depicted on, well, all the images that show it now, that's what we have. Um, and the, what, the superimposed sign that you see there, that's what's accepted in dimension. And um, it's come to my attention that our, the apparatus, the support structure, um, I think it's somewhere a little too extended, about six inches. Um, so I think the thought was if the sign moved in, um, basically you can adjust the sign off of the, um, the hardware and that could be com compliant where it sits, but the support structure itself, um, the end pit where the chains meet comes um, six, to me from the way I measured it about six inches shy of the curb and it, it, and it sounds like it well there's that but it's, it's only supposed to stick out three feet from the building the sign oh the whole no, the support structure oh I thought end. it was just the sign has well, to be out well, I mean that's feet. the thing like the, the, the sign and the support structure are only supposed to go out three feet from the building as well as be six you can have three feet be within out. six inches of the curb because some sidewalks are really narrow and some buildings and some aren't so, um, oh that was so, unclear <laughs> so you're you know there's there's room to move the sign in but not the support structure but when I was looking at it if you go I pulled in the one on the last page and it did print really well but you can see how there's chains anchored into the historic brick in three different places plus the post <coughs> and I started getting nervous about recommending that he take those out without having him come before you and trying to get some guidance on you know is it, do, do you all think it's possible to cut down that post and reattach the chains? Or would even that be damaging? I'm trying to, I, I, I don't, I don't what, know. What kind of condition are the posts and chains in? I mean, they've been up there for a long time. They have. 40 they, years. Yeah, and I've, we've had um, uh, various different, um, different uh, like maintenance crews from, you know, Doug Nettie to yeah. bought the building um, a few years back. And so there's, the building has seen lots of renovations and, and nobody red flagged anything about the hardware and their apparatus there. It seems solid as a rock to me. Um, uh, yeah, the only thing that seems to ever budge is actually this big, huge panel of a sign that's been residing there, mm -hmm. I think, maybe since the 90s or it something. It moves in the wind. Or, it moves yeah. in the wind a bit, uh -huh. you know. Um, <clears throat> I think structurally you could probably shorten the pole, the pole and just hook the chains in the same places. Yeah, maybe the chains hooked and just shorten them and yeah, attach them to the end of the post. Because that was, them. I was hoping that that was something that you felt would be doable um, so like, and acceptable, and then we can bring the whole application yeah. back to review the sign as a whole. I just didn't right. want to have him invest a bunch of money in that if it was something else that, if he felt, felt it needed a completely different support structure. Is that support structure uh, grandfathered in or anything? It's, uh, there's a couple of different ways to read the regulations about once you change the sign, if you have to also change the support structure. Hmm. And that's one reason, I'm, that's another reason I'm looking for your guidance <laughs> as I mean, to I, what, what would be acceptable it, to you all. It looks to me like you could just move the sign in to it, where it could be on the current mm -hmm. yeah. structure. Uh, 
and then cut this the post off so it's right. no more than three feet long. Right, you, uh, Is it not supposed to extend it, more it than It kind of depends on, I mean, it's, yeah. it's going to be a pretty big job to change the post. And I mean, if you're going to saw it off and take the chains down, I'd put new stuff up. I think it could all be done in place. I don't think it's a big deal to shorten that post and weld on a new little tab right. that those chains would attach to <laughs> without, <laughs> without taking anything down. As long as that's, uh, uh, you know, the chains and the posts and everything are in reasonable condition. Yeah. yeah. I mean, chains are easy to replace. It's the attachment that's, you know, yeah. the brick that mm -hmm. you don't want to start messing around right. with. And yeah. that's what I was, and I didn't think if we had, you know, we asked them to take it all out, that there was any way to hide that there was something there. There's four different I'm, places I'm, in the brick. I would just, you know, new chains and cut it off. They can, I think the angles are still good if they're in, if they're uh, using the same fastings on the building. Do you think so, Ben? Is yeah, yeah, I mean, as far as supporting that sort of yeah. projection, I think those, yeah, you can shorten the, those hypotenuses, no problem. And I mean, I would want to look at the, the plates on the building, but my guess is it's fine to, to shorten that thing. Been there, what, 37 is it, years? Is it possible yeah. to just give it a waiver the way it is? I think that sort of gets to your grandfathering it in like, question. I would rather do that than to, have, than to make them move anything on the brick. Well, right, yeah. and that's the yeah. that's the whole idea of cutting it down. Like, if yeah. you're if you don't want them to move stuff on the brick, if he can get it cut down, then I would approve that. And if for some reason somebody couldn't cut it and make it shorter, you know, I, if you don't want to move it on the brick, then I'm not going to make you move it on the brick. I can't that's see what, why you'd here. have to move it on <laughs> the brick. Actually, yeah. it'd be, it would be a because it's a better angle. It would be a stronger support than it is mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you, you could shorten that up without messing with the brick at all. Awesome. In, in, unless the somehow the fasteners in the brick are shot and they need to be replaced, but if they're put in the same spot. I mean, they could be put back in the same hole with some sort of epoxy yeah. and they would yeah. be fine would be my guess. Mm -hmm. Does this sign, I don't know, are we talking about the sign also, or are we not done with the structure? I, I mean, he'll, um, he'll be, I guess it's up to you, but if you want some preliminary feedback, and none of this is official, or if you just want to wait till you come in with your official application. I think I would wait till that, um, um, but I would, my one question would be for the table, I suppose, is um, I feel out of my depth with um, professionals in the sense that I don't, like I know a welder, but I don't know if he has the skill set or capacity to, or even like jobs on ladders, or does that, do I need like, like an electrical company that has a chair, or, you know, I don't know exactly how to get to the top point of where the highest chain link hits to do, um, I don't have a ladder that tall. Yeah, um, people have ladders that tall. That shouldn't be sure an issue. Um, I guess I just was wondering, like, but like for welding and for cutting pipe um, and adhering a new joinery, um, I was. I guess I would wonder if any if anybody knows anybody. Or uh, I know a lot about it. I guess yeah. <laughs> like, do I? How do I? How would I go about such a thing? Maybe. Uh, as far as shortening the pipe, is pretty easy to do with just a grinder and a cutoff sure. wheel. Sure, I'm familiar with cutting the pipe, but the and after then, that part. Yeah, and then you would just take a piece of angle with some holes in it, appropriately sized for your cable, and then just weld that to that piece of pipe, assuming it's still fine, which my guess is it would be. And I would probably do that off a piece of a cube of staging or something like that that just kind of made people walk around and, you know, kind of take that. Step ladder in the back of a pickup truck. <laughs> That's what I told my partner. <laughs> yeah. I was going to pick up in the ladder. No, I, I, I think you would want to use a cube of staging just to, 
which is easy to get. Yeah, and you'd be um, blocking the sidewalk, so we would need to just run that by Department of Public Works, probably, because you'd be blocking the public access through there. It really does stick out a lot, but I, I don't really have any problem with that. It, yeah, it's just been the, there for 37 years. That's, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So what I uh, we're not talking about the sign, but I like your new sign. It's Thanks. Really visible. I guess what you want. Uh, yeah. Um, Is it smaller because of regulations? Yep. Yeah. Once the, there, if they wanted to keep the old dimensions, the only option was to like paint over it, but it's dimensional yeah it's dimensional um and so there, just, there wasn't a way to do that and get the new logo design. so this is as big as they can make it based yep. on our rules for projecting signs yes George, or yeah. the designer said it was 60 percent um smaller smaller yeah it's yeah. a great deal smaller but yeah. i think with the like if you look on the third page the picture like, I think the yellow is going to stand out a lot more, especially in the shade against right. the brick building. That's always in the shade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it probably will help it proportionately if you bring it closer to the building. Like right mm -hmm. now, it feels kind of small and wimpy on that big projection out there. Yeah. But I think brought in and that bright from the sidewalk. Um, yeah. And I, I would consider, you know, talk to whoever your contractor is, see if it's just easier to replace the whole you know replace the pole and the chains it uh, I mean like it's, it's been there over for almost 40 years and uh, yeah I don't know what the housing was like in 73 or the, the amount but I feel like I know there's another sign in the basement it's not that one <laughs> um, yeah, and it's like yellow and black actually, yeah. um, with a lot of like metal and wood together. It's very heavy. <laughs> so I'm thinking, if it was, if this that apparatus was holding that sign, this um, support structure is totally overkill for our blade sign. We're getting we're getting fabricated out of foam. It'll hold tons more than what we're doing, but. Yeah, I mean, I thought it would sit, if it was just, it moved centered in, it would feel right in the center of the sidewalk and hug the building better, and all that visually would look good. Um, but then you'd probably see like a good foot of pipe on the outside of the record, uh -huh. yeah. which is, I could live with it. I don't know if it's like formal or, or if, I don't know. Um, I think I agree that the support structure being smaller will, will be sharp. I think yeah. it would also be fine if we did nothing to the sports structure and just move the sign in. Um, yeah, I would bet nobody's taking a close look at that, you know, how rusty that pipe is. Yeah, like real close. It's <laughs> yeah. not been done. Well, well. Just, it's hard to get at. Yeah. Good. Thank yeah. you. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, thanks. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for your time, everybody. Um, I haven't been to China, so I don't have the, <laughs> uh, the uh, uh, we met, I can't remember, the Planning Commission was a week ago Monday. A week ago today, so yeah. yes. Yeah. Yes, Planning Commission was uh, a week ago. To talk about the new design review regs, they reviewed them, they made some suggestions and changes. And they had the big public... Public hearing, uh... Some people showed up that just don't like regulations, which 
I'm surprised more didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, there were only, what, like five people that spoke? Yeah, I think there were five people that spoke, maybe a dozen that showed up, if that. Yeah, some didn't say anything. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, they made some changes in the boundaries to, they're really focused on being consistent within the neighborhoods that have been designated in the community. You have to look at a map. There's 30 neighborhoods. I think so. Well, I mean, these are all the, each zoning district is divided up into little subcategory mm -hmm. neighborhoods um, to help, in large part, to help with conditional use review when you're doing character of the neighborhood comparisons. Okay. And so they really tried to, they walked around and tried to survey and figure out what actually fits together as a neighborhood. And so when they redid the design review boundary, they were trying to match it to those neighborhoods for consistency so that the entire neighborhood is treated the same way. Sure. I met with them probably a month ago, and we made some suggestions. Uh, first, my house was left out, and I didn't I want my house in design review. <laughs> and it, you know, it didn't make any sense to leave it out. Yeah. It's all part of the National Register yeah. District and everything. And this goes outside the district a little bit, so it's a, a, a it's a different boundary. I think the only major thing that came up was um, solar panels, and the, the the regs on solar panels are really written to deal with rooftop installations on flat roof buildings. Mm -hmm. And if the way you read it, you could not install solar panels on the front face of uh, just a gable roof building. And I have very mixed feelings about that, but I'd like anybody's suggestions because we're going to meet again. Monday. Monday. Um, although I may not make it to that one. Okay. Um, <coughs> Mike, Mike, I mean, Mike felt that the Planning Commission, you know, had a few things to maybe tweak, but didn't feel like yeah, that the I, public I, comments were too negative. In, in general, they weren't too negative, so um, I wouldn't be surprised if the Planning Commission makes a couple of tweaks and then votes it forward to City and, Council uh, next that week. That was the sort of the design was, issue that yeah. came up for me is, do we approve solar panels? on the, you know, the front-facing uh, 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 roof. Uh, and it's, the way it's written now, you really can't. Uh, yeah. On any building. Oh, yeah, the, well, the new, commercial. no, the, well, so if it's a flat roof, mm -hmm. it's exempt from zoning right. altogether. Um, once you have a pitched roof, um, it's limited zoning review, and it's really just if it's in design review. Um, but the new the new regulations really make it really hard because it says that you shouldn't be able to see um, the mechanical yeah. equipment on the roof. You can't do that with solar panels on a pitched right. roof. Right. You right. know, most mechanical equipment is going to go on a flat roof. That's what that language was designed for. But then the right. question, you know, somebody brought up the question of, well, what about solar panels on my, you know, historic home? Mm -hmm. And everybody was like, oh. <laughs> and that that kind of came up in the contest of, you know, are, are you guys going to treat energy conservation matters any different? And, yeah. Uh, and it's, I, I thought it was a good... Uh, a good discussion, and I have a bit of a conflict because I'm thinking about putting solar panels on my roof, which which uh, doesn't face the street, but you can sure see it during the winter. You mm -hmm. can't see it during the summer. But um, but is the mechanical equipment usually like air conditioning units? That's usually yeah. what it's talking about, so and so it's it's almost like whether or not there needs to be some sort of subclause in there about solar panels on roofs still needing to go through design review but not being barred right. from being seen um i would hope we'd allow them on, yeah i mean if the structure can support right. the solar panels, I mean, which some of them can't right and that that goes they have, they have to go through a building permit yeah. still um the one thing i was talking about this with the planning director mike miller and one of the things that he brought up he's like well if they have a historic slate roof, we might not allow it. 
you know, are we going to let make, make you know I allow them to tear sure. up a historic uh, slate roof to install solar panels? Right. So he doesn't feel necessarily comfortable just giving a blanket allowance and 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 exempting it from design review or anything like that. But well, you wouldn't be exempt, right? You'd have to come back, or you'd have you, to come. Yeah, to design you'd have to come to design review still. Yeah. and I think that's. But I think having a blanket statement that says you can't see these rooftop installations from neighboring houses. I don't I don't have the language with me, but there was this language in there where you're like, well, that's it's, just not going to work. It's like solar from panels. street views and things. Yeah. Like yeah sort of that. And uh, the uh, I'm just dealing with part of my work is uh, dealing with installing solar panels on a slate roof. <laughs> it's really difficult. And it's also, you know, makes maintenance impossible. Uh, mm. And so that... It's really not practical to do it. Yeah. It seems like it would be really expensive. It would be expensive, wouldn't it? It would be expensive, yeah. I mean, you'd have to take the slate roof off, put on a new... The easiest thing to install them on is standing seam roof. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. uh, you can just clamp onto the seams, uh, I guess. Uh, but any, any suggestion for... You know, language, I think, would be useful. And I just want to get people feeling... Get people's feeling about it because it's next week we sit yeah. on and talk about it. They don't come, I mean, solar panels come in some are gray and some are black, right? Yeah. But they don't really come in colors that would match the roof color mm -hmm. necessarily. No, I mean, you're going get to a, get a series of shiny uh -huh. surfaces, even right. if the color was the same. You really don't see the sides of the panels. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I look from a preservation point of view. It's reversible, but would it ever be really reversed? I don't know. Yeah. But if somebody all a hundred years from now all of a sudden decides it's a really important house to decide to take the panels off. Yeah, I think it's, if it comes before review, then that's a good thing. I know I looked at them for my house, and they would be right on the front, and I decided I didn't want to do it. <laughs> I don't use a lot of electricity anyway, so. But. I mean, this is a sub-issue to all of those, but any efforts to try to keep them as rectilinear versus, like, the cutouts for various vents, and then they mm -hmm. get kind of, like, asymmetrically patched onto a roof, I think, especially in a very visual spot. Mm -hmm. But if they can be kind of held as a block, that yes, would be one, ideal. One house I looked at over in Burlington has had the panels all over on one side of the roof is a new house, but it, it looked kind of funny, you know, just to mm -hmm. not have it regular and balanced. Yeah. I don't really understand why they didn't put panels on the old roof as long as they're doing it. A good example of what, like, Caledonia Spirits, they have one vent that sticks out, and so there's, like, this one mm -hmm. indentation yeah. Yeah. that seems like that, from a new building, could have been avoided to just keep those things a perfect rectangle. But I gather the consensus is we figure out a way to approve them in most circumstances. It's kind of a case by case, I think, yeah. isn't it? For uh, we can put in there, it's just say it's destructive of historic materials dealing with the slate roof. Well, but I also, I think you know, making sure that we don't have a, a, I'll work with Mike and he can also, I mean, this is all yeah. being recorded, he can look at this discussion and I can report to him about it too. Um, that I think that there's definitely a way to make sure that there's language in there linked to that utilities on the roof to be clear about how you know, the solar panels on roof is not something that's barred, but it needs to go through design review. And it can't be destructive of historic materials. That would, yep. that would, uh, I think that's good, yeah. that would save the slate roof. It's going to make some people mad, but regulations, all regulations make some people mad. <laughs> so. right. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Do I hear a motion to adjourn, or is there any other business anybody wants to talk about? Just wanted to thank you for all the work you've done on the, those regulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank well, you. I've had a lot too. of help. Yeah, and the committee, too. And it's, Meredith is great. Mike has been helpful. Uh, certainly the people on the Historic Preservation Commission have all people put a lot of effort in it. Mm -hmm. And I, th I think they're good. I, I hadn't read them for a couple of months, and I did before the hearing, and 
Uh, my impression was that they made a lot of sense, that they were easy enough. People complained they were too long, but then they complained. If, you, if they're not long enough, they complain <laughs> that they're too vague. Uh -huh. Yeah, I read through them too a while back. And thought, yeah. Good job. They're workable, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, and very few applicants will actually be dealing with all of them. Yeah. They come to us with the project and we'll say, okay, these are the like seven, eight things you need to worry about. Yeah, Mike made a really good point that uh, you know, the staff, <laughs> Meredith, <laughs> will help you through these and decide which pieces of this really apply to your project. Because they are long. They're, what, 13 pages? 15. 15 pages. So they're long. Uh, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> no. well, at least now we can say, okay, these sections <laughs> apply to you in what? There's actually things in here to tell you what you can and can't do. <laughs> That's good. Yes, it helps you. And, and yeah. the uh, next part of the Preservation Commission is to do some guiding brochures and handouts and stuff like that. Yeah. New I've, streetscapes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Those are old. Yes. Yes. Those are so old. I'll, I'll be so glad when somebody goes, we're done with that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Everybody can go home, get depressed, and watch the news. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I move to adjourn. Second. All in All favor? In favor. Oh. Uh, wake me up. Thanks.